Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make with Tech. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to talk about 3D printers. We're not going to talk about laser engravers and cutters. We're not going to talk about electronics or software or firmware or any of those items. We're going to talk about hand tools. Why? Because as a maker, there's some very basic tools that you're going to need to use every day. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Here at Make with Tech, we like to teach people how to create, how to make, how to innovate by using new machinery, new technology that wasn't available maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago, but is now available to anybody at home. So you can use a 3D printer that sells for just hundreds of dollars, or a laser cutter, or a laser engraver, or even new types of woodworking equipment, or a Raspberry Pi single board computer that's very inexpensive. All these things allow you to make and create wonderful things right at home. And if you want to learn more about Make With Tech, you just go to makewithtech.com or forum.makewithtech.com. Now, in addition to those pieces of fancy equipment, electronics, very specialized equipment, you need some basic things in order to be a creator. And we're going to talk about some of those basic things. So let's start with something that's really simple. I've probably used a mat knife for 50 years because in high school, I used to work in theater creating sets and we used to use mat knives to cut out the canvas that we put on frames for the set backgrounds. A mat knife really hasn't changed much in all those years. They used to always be metal. Now you get them in plastic, but they basically slide a blade out and the replacement blades you get at any of your local hardware stores or online, and they're inexpensive. But there was always one downside to a mat knife, and that was changing the blade. You had to take this screw out, you have to take it apart, there's a little spring in there. Often I would try to do it when I was outside for some reason, and I'd drop the little spring or the screw in the grass. Well, that's the end of a good mat knife because for some reason I could never find them. So there's a better alternative today. This is the better alternative. This happens to be the tool shop brand, which I believe is from the big box store called Menards. But you can get these in many different brands. As a matter of fact, I've linked one from Amazon and the one I've linked sells for the high price of $9.50. So for under 10 bucks, you can get a better mat knife. Well, what makes it better? First of all, when it's closed, it's very, very secure. So you can feel comfortable putting this in your pocket, maybe clipping it to your belt. There's a button or a release, and they vary from version to version that releases it. And then you'll notice they're generally these finger grips that makes it a very nice grip for precision movement. But that's not really what's so wonderful. What's so wonderful is almost all of them have a release here that you press in and let you take the blade out. You press it in again and you can put the blade back in. Now these blades are always two-sided so you can just flip them around and you get a new cutting blade when you're out in the field using it. So this $10 item is a better mat knife. Now, the second item is another example of something that's better than something I've used for a very long time. These are Allen wrenches or hex wrenches. And many of you probably have one of these sets with a whole bunch of different sizes sitting in your toolbox somewhere. Maybe you have a metric set and an English set. Many of the newer devices we use today require the metric set. And the problem with this is not that it doesn't work, it's that it's really hard to turn this reliably. And so if you get 3D printers, if you've bought a 3D printer recently, they normally ship with their own. 
hex wrenches. And these are okay, but it's if the hex bolt is really long or it's in an awkward position, they're sometimes hard, hard to use. So there's a better alternative. The better alternative is just to get yourself a set of hex wrenches that look like screwdrivers. These are really easy to use. They're easy to manipulate. They're easy to spin. And there's a really positive side effect. Many of these hex bolts that are used in devices today are used in aluminum or even plastic. And if you use one of these, and you have this big old thing on the end and you start cranking it, you're gonna over tank, tighten it, and maybe strip it out. Most of the time you want these hex bolts to be finger tight. That means as tight as you can make them tight, but with just using your fingertips. You don't wanna crank on it. This makes it perfect. So this is another example of just a better tool. And this set of seven, that I've linked from Amazon, sells for a price of, I think it's $12. Okay, let's look at what's next. Well, if you do any 3D printing, you've probably got some of these snips in the box because you need them to cut your filament. But I found these are just a better wire cutter for most of the electronics work I do. For years, I used this type of wire cutter and that's perfectly fine for electrical wiring in your home where the wires are big and fat and heavy. But you know what? These work great for everything else. They also work really well for cutting fishing line. So I use these a lot in my shop today. This particular brand from Zuron is a brand I see most often within the boxes uh, that I get from a variety of printer manufacturers. They happen to have this brand, and what's nice about it is that spring. See that spring there? It really is a big deal. It makes it much nicer to use. This sells for $11 on Amazon. Okay, now we're sort of gonna move up a bit to some items that are a little more expensive. The first one is this screwdriver set from Wera, W-E-R-A, Wera. And it comes in this nice case that I never use. I just take this. And this screwdriver doesn't look like a screwdriver at first because there's no bits and it's sort of short and stubby. Well, the bits, if you press on the bottom here, the bits are located inside here. Now, screwdrivers are one of the items where I really think it makes sense to pay for the slightly more expensive version because the metal that they use for the tips is just better. It doesn't strip out. So you can slide that in there and then you have a screwdriver you can use that fits in small areas. And one of the things that's sort of nice about it is this ring twists. So you can hold the ring when you're getting started and twist it. But with the press of a button, you have a full size screwdriver. Remarkable, really nice tool. Now to remove the bit, you press this up and you pull the bit out. You press on the bottom down here, you put it back in the base. Then to reset this, it's a little tricky because you press this ring down, it feels like it's all the way down. You have to press hard till it clicks and then you reset it. So this item I mentioned is a bit more expensive. This sells for $38 on Amazon. Now let's look at what's next. Well, if you've done any 3D printing, you know sometimes your prints stick too well to your print surface and you have to sort of scrape them up. And the 3D printer manufacturers generally give you a paint scraper with your 3D printer. And some are sharper, some are not. These just don't work very well. You're sort of hacking at it. And let me give you two tricks. Number one, make sure your print surface is completely cool. That means room temperature cool. If it's warm at all, that print's still gonna stick. So I literally take a little box fan and blow it on my prints when I wanna get them off more quickly. Some people think that's bad for the print itself. You want the layers to cool naturally. I haven't found any problem, but that helps a lot. And when it's perfectly cool, they'll often come off. 
But if they don't, the best way to get them off is a razor blade style paint scraper because that razor blade at the end is very thin. Now you don't want to put it like this. You don't want to hack at it. You want to get it very flat to the surface and just barely pry a corner up. Then you can use your paint scraper to twist it up. Now there's a problem though. And the problem is I've tried a bunch of brands of these. They're not all the same because the actual angle of the blades are different and it makes a difference. If they're too steep, it won't work. So I really like this Titan brand. This Titan brand comes in a kit with two of them. You can use them both. I actually use this one more often, but you can use them both. And then you also have paint scrapers to use for getting masking tape off windows and other things you might want to do in your house. Um, and these are remarkably inexpensive. They're under $15 for this two-part kit in, uh, on Amazon. Now, next, I'm going to talk about another item where it pays to spend more money. You can get lots and lots of bits of different sizes in these kits, very inexpensive. They're like in the uh, low cost bin at your local hardware store. You can buy them online. Um, and you know what? When you see something with this number of bits that sells for, I don't know, 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks, the quality is probably not very good. And if you pick these up and feel these, it just, this metal seems like it's gonna be a little soft. And that means it's gonna strip out, it's not gonna fit precisely. So when I want precision tools, I go with an expensive alternative, but that's just been very reliable. And I've used these for about 10 years. This is an earlier kit I had from a number of years ago from iFixit iFixit is known for making a bunch of videos about how to fix your iPhone yourself, your Android phone, your laptop, and they tear apart them and then they'll sell you replacement parts. They have very specialized tools, but I find their bit drivers to be really excellent and worth the extra money. So this particular case uh, was a particular case designed for use with fixing phone so it has a suction cup for removing the screens it has some specialty pry tools for prying open cases um, and if you're just doing 3d printing and those types of things you probably don't need that you can get one like this that's just an assortment of tools these range from about twenty dollars to sixty dollars depending on how many bits you get in the assortment and that's also linked below. Now, the next item is a co an accommodation to my age. I'm 68 years old. Now I'm in okay shape for a 68 year old guy and I have great genetics. My father is 95, my mother is 93. They're both still living and doing okay. Um, now the problem is that I always had remarkably good near vision. I was always a little nearsighted, so I've worn glasses for driving and for watching movies for a long time, but I could take my glasses off and I could see things perfectly. In fact, when I was a kid, I worked in a family business that was in the printing business. And when a printing plate starts to wear down, sometimes the dot over an eye wears out on the plate and the pressman notices the dots over the eye or some of them are missing. And they would call me over because my eyesight was so good. And I'd use a little needle to put a new dot over the eye. Well, those days have started to disappear. So the first thing I did is I got a pair of inexpensive readers at the local pharmacy at Walgreens or Walmart. And they work okay. But one of the things you notice as you get older is you need both magnification and light. So I found these online at Amazon. And I've actually tried a couple different brands. Some don't have the earpieces. They're different types. This is the brand that I like the most. And I can't pronounce this. It's Y-O-C, Yak T-O, To Sun. Yak To Sun. And these sell on Amazon for 
under $18. And they come with an assortment of five different lenses. Now, why do you need different lenses? Well, the more significant the power of the magnification, the closer you have to be to the item. So depending on what you're working on, you want to get the right magnification and the right distance. These also have a very convenient light here. You'll see this light right over here. And that makes a big difference. So you take your glasses off, if you wear glasses or if you don't, these go on your nose. These can flip up out of the way when you want to see something at a distance. They can flip back down and then you can use it to see things with very fine detail. Uh, these are a lifesaver for me. And I often use them if I'm working on uh, repairing a circuit board or repairing a fine part on a 3D printer, maybe tightening the little screws that you have that hold the thermistor, the little thermostat in a hot end. I use them for working on people's glasses where, where they're those very fine screws. I take it my iFixit bits and I'm able to repair people's glasses with this set of magnifiers. Now, the last item is both a specialty item and an item you can use every day. And it's a special type of pliers called a RoboGrip. RoboGrip is a trademark term, but there are lots of people that make these. This happens to be from the Rigid brand, which I believe you buy at Home Depot here in the United States. But I've linked a, a, another brand on Amazon that also has the RoboGrip trademark. It's the same mechanism, all the screws are in the same place. What makes this unique is it's a self-adjusting pliers. So when you grip on something, you'll notice it collapses down and there's a spring in there that self-adjusts. And why is that important? Well, if I'm trying to replace the nozzle in a 3D printer, you have to hold the heating block very stay steady. If you don't hold that heating block steady, it's gonna twist and you're gonna damage your 3D printer. So I'll grip the heating block with this robo grip, and then I'll use a socket wrench to take the nozzle out. And it's a wonderful combination. But this comes in two sizes. This is the seven inch. There's also a 10 inch that I use for plumbing around the house all the time. And uh, the seven inch sells for once again, let's see, $20, under $20 on Amazon. So folks, those are some of the tools that I really like, that have made it more pleasant for me to work in my shop. I've showed you the old version and the new version. I've showed you tools used for a new purpose. I've showed you tools that accommodate my age. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, leave a comment below or go to forum.makewithtalk.com and leave a comment. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the video, recommend it to your friends, and let's continue to learn things together.